Hi, I'm Alison Harding and I'm the VP of Lotomis Data Solutions for the EMEA region. There's lots of confusion around the different types of data available in the market. First party, second party, third party, and even zero party. And today I hope to clear it all up by giving you a breakdown of the different data definitions. So what is first party data? First party data is the information you collect directly from your audience or customers. It includes data from behaviors, actions, or interests demonstrated across your websites or apps, data you have in your CRM, subscription data or social data. It can also include non-online information, such as completed surveys, customer feedback, and other customer information shared in your CRM database. First party data is highly valuable because of its quality. Because you collect it directly from the source, you know it's accurate. And because it comes straight from your audience, you know it's relevant to your business. Let's take a look at a real life example of first party data. Say a sports brand attracts a user to their website. The user is interested in tennis and fills out a form for tennis specific product discount. The sports brand now has that user's information in their internal CRM and can market accordingly. What is second party data? Well, second party data is essentially somebody else's first party data. The seller collects data straight from their audience and it comes from one source. You purchase second party data directly from the company that owns it. There's no middleman in such a transaction. It requires you to seek out companies with data you need and form a relationship or collaboration with them. Second party data is very similar to first party data, but it comes from a source other than your own audience. Let's take a look at a real life example of second party data. Say our sports brand is looking to expand brand awareness amongst tennis players at large. They might seek out a sports focused publisher and purchase this publication's first party data, which might consist of a list of readers who have specified they're interested in tennis or have viewed tennis related content on the publication's site. And what is third party data? Well, third party data is data that you buy from outside sources that are not the original collectors of that data. Instead, you buy it from large data aggregators that pull it from various other platforms and websites where it's generated. These aggregators pay publishers and other data owners for their first party data. The aggregators then collect it into one large data set and sell it as third party data. Many different companies sell this kind of data and it's accessible through many different avenues. And the Low to Me Data Exchange is one of the largest third party data exchanges in the world. And many companies have raced to catch up on this scale. And unfortunately, it's probably left some concerns over accuracy. And there's an industry perception that third party data is less privacy compliant. And it's worth noting that actually the three main USPs of low to me data in comparison with others is the fact that firstly, its data is, secure, is sourced from highly vetted, screen scored and evaluated partners, all compliant with privacy frameworks. Secondly, our data collection methodology includes highly accurate self-declared data or demonstrated audiences. So declared data may be somebody that's filled in a survey, a login, subscription, registration, declaring their demographics to be a mum of a two-year-old, a certain income level, a certain affluency, a certain job title. And then behaviours, we're not just saying that somebody's had to have um, landed on a, a certain site about a subject, they've actually had to interact with that page. They've demonstrated those behaviours. So they've liked, shared, watched a video, commented and interacted with the page. And finally, data with Low to Me has a live window of only 30 days. So if a user hasn't made one of those actions, after that time, they don't remain in the segment. And there's other data companies out there that might stretch those audiences to anything up to 90 days. Going back to our tennis example, a sports brand looking to reach an even broader audience of tennis players might purchase audience segments from a third party data provider, which includes users who have revealed in one way or another that they're interested in tennis. These audiences are broad and could be readers from multiple different tennis publications, users who've purchased tennis related products on various sites around the web, or even users who have subscribed to specific tennis related news or content. 
And now what is zero party data? Well, every time you think you've got the hang of this industry, another buzzword comes along to be added to the ad tech buzzword bingo bonanza. And the latest is zero party data. Now, zero party data is data that is volunteered by the user intentionally. So the main distinction is that this data is both explicit and declared rather than someone visiting a website and the website making assumptions about that user, which would be classed as first party data. It also offers a value exchange. So publishers will get this mainly from subscriptions, preference centers where users can manage their preferences and maybe quizzes or surveys. In return, the end user will be told they get a better user experience, personalized ads, and maybe payment tokens or discounts. Let's go back to our first party data example. A sporting brand has a collection of users in their CRM who have specified they're interested in tennis relating products. Now, say this brand sends this group of users a survey, asking them to specify what particular brand of tennis products is their favorite. The sports brand can then use this zero party data to deliver highly personalized communications of this group of users. Phew, we covered a lot. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of the different types of data categories. It's important to remember that all data when well utilized is valuable. So don't fall into the trap that one category is more important than the other. An effective digital marketing strategy will include all four types of these data. And that's it for now.